So hello everybody. Hello, Lizzie's telling me there's no sound, but I think we're sorted now, Lizzie, if that's okay. Because the boss is watching, so I have to be careful. <laughs> she's uh, she's very kind to me. <laughs> so it's lovely to see everybody. Uh, Monday the 25th, I'll let you into a secret, it's my husband's birthday today. Um, so after we finish this, he's got a special little meal for me. I should be cooking for him, shouldn't I? But I have no idea what it was, what it is, surprise pie. So um, that's what we're going to look forward to in a little while. And uh, so hi, Carol. So it's Monday, it's the 25th and it is Mim Day. So are you looking forward to the pattern? Have you had a chance to look at the pattern? because um, I haven't had chance today. I've been at work all day and I haven't had chance to really look at, at Facebook at all. So I'm hoping you've uh, you've had a, a good look at the pattern. Good sound this week, that's good. And I think um, the issues that we had for any gold members that we had on Thursday, um, Lizzie's managed to sort those out as well now. So happy birthday to your husband, to, to my husband. Well, yeah, um, oh, I didn't get him a present and a nothing. I'm terrible, aren't I? I told him we'll go out and spend money on him. <laughs> so, um, yes, I've been at work all day and then I've come home and I've tidied my room because you just would not have wanted to see it. It was like a bomb's dropped. It always is like a bomb's dropped. It's terrible. And I just show you the little bit that I want you to see. So can you see some lights? Yeah, and you can see um, bits and pieces. So for anybody who's not a gold member, you've got until tomorrow night to get onto lizzycurtis.com, sort yourselves out with a subscription, join the Facebook group because tomorrow night I'm on showing you how to do this wall hanging up here. So that's a gorgeous pattern. But tonight we're doing Kitty and uh, Kitty is on our Christmas theme again. So this is the last um, Making It Monday in the Christmas uh, theme uh, month. July and so this is Kitty this is um, it's kind of like a sack but a small one to put presents in to put under the tree but you can use it for whatever you want um, Lizzie and I did discover that we can get at least two bottles in there so that's one each and if we can get a third then one to spare <laughs> so um, yes yeah, so we're gonna make um, Kitty tonight. I've got the pattern already. I'm all prepared. So shall we see if we can have a look? Um, I just want to have a quick go on my Mac for something a second just to make sure that I can see you live here. Bear with me a moment everybody because then I can see your comments better on on my laptop than I can. Oh right yeah we're there than I can on my phone because I, I keep getting notifications coming up even though you can't hear them. Um, so a low, yes, for Jim. So Jim for me and Sherry for uh, Lizzie. So um, yeah, and if I, yes, because I've already got one that's made. Now I, I, what have I done with it? I need to go and fetch it, don't I? I'm so sorry. Bear with me one minute. Oh, I am so sorry. Let me show you. Yeah, I had to put it in the other room because I've got a monster of a, a puppy and um, monsters of two older dogs as well. So, um, oh, sorry, let me turn that off. Something coming up from the bottom now. So here it is. And you can see, um, well, you might not be able to see, you might not know, but this is a very special tree. And we'll look at that in a minute. So um, yeah, so there we are. Lots of um, lots of gifts can go in there, and it will stand upon its own. I'll poke the phone down in a minute, change the angle, and you can have a look at it on the desk. All right. So um, shall we get going? And so, what have you all been doing today? While I get started, um, what have you all been doing today? Like I say, I've been at work. We've had a busy day again at work. So um, yeah, that's so that's Kitty. I'm going to pop her there for a minute, and we'll pop her over there for a minute, and we're going to start this new one. So I've got my pattern ready, 
and I've done a little a uh, few little bits to um to make just to make it a bit quicker I know you like to see the sewing and things but you've seen me and Lizzie loads of times make straps so we've just got our two straps that I've already made there and I've got this gorgeous red fabric and I'm using metallic thread um, down um, on the top stitching so that's there ready I've got my bits and pieces of um, let me turn my iron on because then I can get started um, my bits and pieces of applique now don't be afraid of applique this is only three bits all right let me just push that down a bit further is that better can you see me now yeah um, so it's only three pieces of applique so that's the bottom of the tree so that's number one <clears throat> and it goes like that for you to see and then i've got the star for the top and i've got the tree itself and tonight i'm going to do a silver tree just because i can because it's all glittery um so that's my bits and pieces of applique so we'll just run quickly through that in a minute this is my front fabric all right because it's got the stabilizer on it so if i have a look in the pattern it tells you to stabilize and what i've actually done and i'll just run through it very quickly is i cut these as it says in the packet these pieces this is my outer and these are my lining pieces that's my uh, bosel and i've actually quilted the back that's the back piece but what i actually did to cut these pieces out was to um to cut rectangles all right um and then this is the top so i'll put it that way for you what i did was i came in from the side an inch and a half and i drew a line from there right down to the bottom and then i just cut with my rotary cutter on that line so we've actually got this shape that i don't even know what it is is a i don't know it's some sort of funny rectangle it's been a long time since i did geometry at school and i can't remember everything can i my hard drive is full by now <laughs> so um so that's what i did for these yes it does waste a little bit of fabric so if you want to cut it out there was no way i could do a template for you because it just won't fit obviously on an a4 piece of paper but that's what i've done um and so this is the front and those are my linings so i'm going to put those to one side and the first thing we're going to do is to sort out the applique now we've got our shape for our main um, fabric etc we're going to sort out the applique so what you have to remember is that the widest part is on the bottom so that's correct for you all right the widest part is the bottom because we're going to put quite a big boxy bottom in this as you can see that's quite wide all right so if that wasn't shaped um it would go very very um no not that way that way um sort of a funny shape at the top and i wanted a straight one okay so we're going to start our, our applique and what i'm going to do first is to just use my iron i'll bring it in for you to see to uh dear so i've traced the um the template now if anyone hasn't got this template of Lizzie's, let me see if I can bring it forward for you a bit. This was one of the two set in, in a set. If you haven't got that one, then the template is on the pattern. All right. It's exactly the same, exactly the same size and everything. So there's your template there. And the template for the star and the pot is on the pattern as well. So if you have got this, then you can just draw around this straight onto the paper side of your heat and bond or bond web whatever you've got all right if not just trace it on now you don't have to worry about flipping it over or having it the wrong way around because all these pieces are symmetrical so it doesn't matter what way round they go all right so trace it on and then we're going to we cut it out a little bit wider than the actual this is not actually not showing up very well here but you can see that that goes there so that's fine um and we've cut it out just a little bit wider and i've got my scrap of fabric here so i'm going to pop it onto the reverse of the fabric and pop it with an iron now i was reading the instructions about this this is something um something that i didn't even really know i hadn't thought of but it said when you put your iron down on it 
have a warmish iron, medium iron, and leave it down for two minutes. Now look at the rookie error. I obviously did that with um, two seconds, not two minutes. Goodness me, two minutes and we'd have a fire. I obviously did that with my heat erasable pen, but I can actually see where that is. And do you know it's a Christmas tree? It doesn't matter if it's slightly big, slightly, slightly small slightly lopsided, doesn't matter. Let's call it a wonky Christmas tree. So just pop your iron down for two seconds, it said. And then when you put your fabric on to the other fabric here, it says to hold it down for six seconds. Well, I didn't know that. So we learn something new every day. Every day is a school day. So all I'm doing is popping those on there and then I'm going to cut them out. So I've got my little scissors here. Unfortunately, I can see the, yeah, I can see the, now you probably, well, you wouldn't definitely see it because I can only just. So I'm just going to cut them out. If it's a wonky star, it doesn't matter either. How many stars do you see that are actually shaped like this? They're not, are they? They're shaped any old way. But we like to represent our stars in this shape and the pen mark is left a little line at the pen you know the pen where I drew it on so we're cutting out to the line so that's a lesson learned always make sure and I do usually I don't know what even possessed me when I was prepping this yesterday um, always make sure you do it with a pencil or a, um, a proper pen rather than the heat erasable pen. All right, I've got my Ava under the table here. So there's our star. Can you see that? This is our tree. So we just cut up there. And if I turn it towards the light, I'm sorry if you can't see me doing this, but if I turn it towards the light, I can actually see the lines. But as I say, it doesn't matter if it's slightly smaller, slightly wonky. They get good money for wonky veg, don't they? So I'm sure we can manage with a wonky tree. There's our tree. So that's the right side up for you. And here's our pot. And we'll get these adhered on. And then we'll have a little play with some free motion. Now, be honest with me. Who's, um, who's afraid of free motion? Come on confession time just pop your hands up if you're afraid of free motion i'm going to take the back off here because i must admit that i was but the more i've done of it the more i've grown to absolutely love it when i first did it some years ago i thought oh gosh i'm never going to be able to master this but you know it's free motion that's why it's called free motion or free machining or whatever so it doesn't matter it's absolutely fine so there's my three bits i've taken the back off now, for these three bits, you could go straight onto the onto the fabric if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to remind you how we do it on um, our applique mat if you have one of these. And so it's exactly the same whether you do this on fabric or not. So this one has a number one on the template. So we're going to pop that down there because the tree is going to go over the top. The tree is number two. So it's going to go just over the top there. Can you see that? Just just goes over the top. Let's see if I can lift this up a little bit. So that's number one. And then the tree, the little point just goes over the top. I think it comes up to about there. Just like a quarter of an inch underneath. And then the star, you've got two choices. You can put it like that. Like that there. Yeah. Or you can put it with a point coming down there or you could put it at a jaunty angle you could put it however way you like so be creative be artistic I'm going to be dead boring and I like to have this right in the center just because I've got a bit of a control thing going on there we go and all we're going to do now is just so not to rub it over just to hold it onto it place so it says about six seconds um, on fabric so somewhere in between two and six seconds 
for your applique mat. Your applique mat won't burn. It will feel hot, but it won't burn. All right. So we're ready with all that. And then we need to leave that cool down just for a few seconds. So I'm going to take my ironing mat out of the way. I'll take my lead out of the way as well. Take my ironing mat out of the way for a second. Move that and then put this back on my ironing mat. All right. So I would like it as close to the centre as I can get it. And I'm going to come down roughly two and a half, three inches. Now this is cooled down. It's not cold yet, but it's very cool. I can peel that off and it all will come off in one layer. So it's clever, isn't it? So you haven't got to worry about the pieces moving. And I'm going to put it kind of about there. I've folded that fabric in half and um, I'm going to put it sort of there. If you want it further down, you can, not forgetting that your box bottom is going to come with boxing two inches in. So um, we don't want it too far down. So there is my tree, more or less in the centre. If you want to get a ruler out, then feel free to do that. Um, I'm not going to because I'm quite happy that my line is here, it's in the centre. And six seconds, thereabouts, to adhere to your fabric. I've got my iron on two because this is a hot iron. You'll know your own iron, I think, because... Um, You'll have got used to it, so you'll know what's hot and what's not. And there we are. We have got our tree. So I said it was special because it's yet another way for you to use your template. Aren't these fantastic? For you that haven't been able to, to get them or didn't think you needed them, as I say, the template um, is on there and it's exactly the same. It is the same size, everything is, is the same um, as if you were Okay, right, so that's just telling me that there's... If I turn my microphone off, can you still hear me? Let's do a little bit of a test. Can you still hear me or is it too bad? I'll just wait for you to say um, whether you can still hear me. Can anyone hear me now? The templates are great. I can see what you're doing. Not quite so well. So if I shout at you a little bit, the only thing is my phone is really playing up. So I'm going to have to plug it in because I lose you. Sorry about my hand in the way. I'll just plug it in for a second. And can you tell me if you can hear me? Because I can shout. I don't want to shout at you. I just want you to be able to hear me. I can hear you, but I had to turn up the volume. That's a good idea. If everybody can turn up their volume, then I can shout a bit louder. Because um, I don't want the I don't want it not not being done. I realised about half past six that I hadn't plugged my phone in. Um, so sorry about that. But we'll shout. Okay, Mary, you can't hear me clearly. I'll shout at you. Can you turn your volume up? All right, if there's a problem, it's not good at all. There's some people saying it's not good and some people saying it's fine. So I'm going to continue. If you've got a problem with your sound, try turning it up. But I am going to continue for a bit. Once I've charged the phone up, if there's any problems, I can always put my microphone back on, okay? So let me just turn it off. Well, that's going to die as well. Right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to do a little playing with some free motion. I'm not going to do a lot. Um, I want you to decorate your tree how you'd like to, um, but I'm just gonna give you a couple of little ideas that you can see from the pattern. Now, it's going to be a little bit awkward for me to, um, to show you the whole thing. So, is that a good, um, is that a good angle for you? So you can see what I'm doing, all right? If you want to, you can machine this with an ordinary straight foot. Um, if you want to, you can hand sew it. If you don't want to do anything, that's fine. You can use a bit of glue and just decorate a tree. Um, but see how you get on. Um, try a bit of free motion. It's really, really good for you. And it doesn't matter whether you go wrong or not. 
what I would suggest is you pop your needle down and bring your um, bobbin thread up because then you can control them and when we've done a little bit we can um, we can cut it off and then it won't get in our way and stop our stitching from from being nice and smooth all right is everybody okay yeah looks good okay i'm going to lean round then so i'm going to do a few stitches on the spot oh if i can pick up threads i'll be okay okay a few stitches on the spot and then i'm going to start going once i've gone away from those threads i can turn them off because uh, cut them off because i've locked it so so I'm just doing a straight line up there. If you want to, you can just move along. If you feel that that's a little bit awkward for you, you can turn the fabric round and do what you like. I'm going really wibbly wobbly, but you know, it doesn't matter. I've got metallic thread on here and the needle that I've got in my machine if you can get them, I got mine from eBay. If you can get it, it's called a top stitch titanium needle. They're not cheap, but you're only going to use it for this sort of work. So if it's something that you feel that you can do, and you'd like to, um, you'd like to get into your free machining, then if you want to invest in that needle, it just helps with the, um, with the metallic thread. You don't need it otherwise, unless you're you know, using metallic thread. But I think it looks rather nice, so I quite like doing it. So all I've done is gone round a tree for now. You can go round the star, then I would change to black thread and go round the pot, or if you want silver round your pot, you can do that. And then I'll just show you what I did um, with Wibbly Wobbly is your straight, is it, Michelle? Well, do you know what? It's mine as well. And I think the more wibbly wobbly it is, the nicer it looks. That's my opinion. If anybody else says differently, they're not welcome. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you is just how I did the bit of um, tinsel. If you can see here, I'll just bring this in. I just did a little bit of garlands, if you like. These red bits are um, a bit of hand stitching that I did, just some French knots with um, with embroidery thread. So you can do that if you want to, or you can you can stick on sequins, or you can sew on beads, or you can do whatever you like. So I'm going to turn this around so that it's facing me. Sorry, because it's a little bit easier, but I'm sure you'll be able to tell what I'm doing. I'm going to go from here. Didn't pull my thread up, but never mind. It'll only get caught on the back if it's going to get caught, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little bit of curves and stop, and then go from there to back to the other side. I'm going to do more on this one than the other one. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just going sort of in a curved shape from one side just to the other. And as I get down the bottom, I'm going to put the lines a bit further apart. So we've gone all the way down. What I'm going to do is just go back. So just come on the same line. <laughs> don't worry about being late you can always catch up with the beginning at another time if you really want to or you can watch it all back at the same time so I like to do three rows because it makes it stand out a little bit so we're going to go back up to the top and then I'm coming back down to the bottom don't worry if you're not directly on the line because it actually looks better if you're not on your previous line. Nice smooth action and it's really good fun as long as your shoulders don't come up because then it makes your arms ache.
and then at the end a couple of stitches just to um, to secure it so that it doesn't all come undone and then you can cut your threads right up to your stitching at the back and you pop that out of the way so can you see what I've done there now I can't see very well in my phone because it's obviously pointing down to the desk so it's not a good angle for me and my I can see on my can you see the um my, oh there you go you can see the sparkle yeah I might just turn my light on a little bit to see if I can make things a little bit clearer in here. It's probably going to strobe now, isn't it? So there's our tree. I would do some on the star. I would do some on there. Do whatever you want. But I'm going to leave it at that for now. So, because otherwise, if we keep playing all night, we won't have time to do anything else. The next thing we're going to do is to adhere the wadding to this side. Now... You'd probably adhere both sets, both bits of wadding, um, one on the back and quilt and one on the front and quilt. So this is going to take a couple of minutes because the bosal foam takes a little while to, um, to adhere. So, but I just wanted you to see that, if I show you on the back, that this is about a quarter of an inch all round less so that we don't have the bulk in the seams when we come to putting this together. This one needs more than six seconds, so I'm just going to try and do this quite quickly and see how quickly it will adhere. I put the other one under my, under my steam press and it does it all at once, so it's really quite quick. We're not, I'm not going to worry if it doesn't because I'm just going to do, I'm not going to do as much quilting on the front of this as, I, as I've done on the back. Um, it doesn't matter. If you decide you don't want any quilting, um, that's fine. But if you're using Bosal, you probably need a little bit because otherwise it'll separate. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. Please take your time to do it. I'm do only doing this for speed at the moment. So please take your time. I'm going to waft it about a bit so it's cool because what I want to do next is to just draw a couple of lines. If I can only find my pen, my ruler, there it is. So what I did with the other one is I drew a line from top to bottom like that. All right. So you can see the top and then you can see the bottom. It's too wide, isn't it, for my desk? Or too long, rather, for my desk. And then I drew a line top to bottom there. And then I drew um, quilt lines that hit an inch and a half in. So you can see here, I've got diamonds. And these rows of stitching are an inch and a half apart on that side, on that direction and in that direction. Okay, you can do whatever you like. If you want to do some swirls, a bit of free, free uh, motion. Um, quilty and then do that but all I'm going to do on this one and I just want you to make sure that you don't quilt over the tree all right all I'm going to do on this one is I am going to I think what I'll do is I'll do some lines down the side might not look so pretty but I'm going to do some lines just down there and I'm going to do these a couple of inches apart just to show you all right. The only thing is that once you've done, oh, how far in was that? Inch and a quarter. Once you've done the quilting, or once you've put the the bag or the sack together, you won't be able to do any more quilting. So you've got to do whatever you want to do at this juncture. Um. So, and then I'm going to put a line down the middle. So only going up as far as the tree and down um, at the bottom. So <clears throat> for this one, I'm going to use a different machine and I'm just going to pop, pop this thread in because I didn't want to be messing around changing my, oh, I'm so sorry, changing my feet, etc. So I'm going to use the other machine. And I'll just thread it up 
cut off and go. Oops. Goodness me, I'm making a lot of noise tonight. It's a good job I haven't got my microphone on. <laughs> okay, so let's thread this up. I suppose I ought to turn it on. And I'll move it in a minute if you can't see it very well. I'll just get my I thread in the machine. I can't reach the back sometimes in this to get it round. There we go. There we are. So that's all threaded up. For anybody that, that just needs to know, um, I have got, I think it's cream or grey in the bottom here, just normal thread. So you don't have to put metallic thread in, in the bottom, in, in the, um, I'll just turn the light on. Yeah. Realise how dark it gets now. Um, you don't need to put metallic thread in your bobbin. I just got ordinary white thread in there at the moment. I'm going to turn my stitch length up to three, 3.5. I'm just going to whiz down this. I've got a walking foot on here because mine is a built-in walking foot. Um, and you do get a nicer finish if you use a walking foot. go the same way so that I don't get any distortion. So come back to the top and do the next one. Don't worry if you miss the line. It's only a guideline. Nobody's going to measure. As we said, if anybody notices and mentions it, they're not welcome. So just down the bottom, and I'm just going to do a lock-in stitch, just so it doesn't come apart, and then go the other side of the tree, and lock-in stitch. You don't need a locking stitch on the edges because that's going to be enclosed in your seam allowances when we put it all together. But near the tree, I don't want it to come undone. So, nearly there. The, um, Quilting on bosal foam gives it an absolute gorgeous look. It's really quite effective because you get those nice deep furrows. And with this um, metallic thread, it really makes it stand out, especially on the red. Okay, so that's that one done. And as you can see, that now will hold the bosal in place. And we're going to be... Um, we're going to be scissors. Where are you? That's why we've always got another set. Um, we're going to be pressing this again anyway um, to get rid of those lines. That's why we do them with the heat erasable. So just turn that back on a second. Bring my mat in and we'll get rid of these lines. Now don't spend, if you're using metallic thread, don't spend huge amounts of time on the thread with your iron because we don't want any damage to your thread. And if your iron's warm, it's very, very easy to take those, um, those lines away. Okay, so 
So there's our tree. There's my bit of um, quilting. All right. And the next job is to put these together. Like I say, you do as much or as little in the way of um, decoration as you want to. Gosh, they won't go together right size. They want to fight me. So this is the bottom, don't forget. So we're going to sew, put these right sides together and we're going to sew these together down the one side, across the bottom and up the other side. Okay? Just very straightforward, very simple. If you want to pin this, um, then go ahead. Actually, what I am going to do is to take that thread off and put my normal thread on. I don't want to be using metallic thread. So bear with me while I just... That's the problem with trying to show you different things, is that you have to wait around for me to thread up my machine. Never mind, it's good practice for me. I can manage this um, this thread cutter because my my jukey I've never got to grips with a thread cutter on there never oh, but this one easy peasy so we're doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance little back stitch at the top and then all the way down to fit make it that's what it's all about being in control so I don't know who cut this but it certainly wasn't me because I would have cut it much better than this <laughs> with this I think is because I've got lots of quilting on the um, on the back and not quite so much on the front so quilting always brings the, um, the size in a little bit so that's another lesson for us all is to make sure that you know if we're quilting it's probably best to quilt on the set, quilt in the same manner on both sides. Okay. So we've sewn quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down and across the bottom. All right. And now we're going to turn through. No, we're not going to turn through. Now we're going to box the bottom. So I don't know why I said turn through then. So we need to match that seam up with the bottom seam. So this side seam with the bottom seam. So just pull those apart so that you make a triangle at the bottom. And because we've got the bosel there, it's difficult to actually feel that that's in the right place. So I tend to grab a pin, put it through the seam here, and then through the seam at the bottom. All right? And then put the pin in and then what we're going to do now we're going to measure up from the bottom where the stitch line is so I'll do it this way around it tells you on the pattern how far up to to draw the line make sure it's straight and draw a line across. If you just want to judge this, if you're good at doing it, that's absolutely your decision. But I like to draw a line. Then I'm going to take you back to the machine. Is everybody okay? Somebody's just dropped their grandchildren off, so they're going to catch up later. That's perfect. Sew a 
along the line that I drew. I'm going to do the same with the other side. So bring your seams together. You can see that those was not not um, stuck, but it doesn't matter at this stage because we can still sew it in place because it's either side of the seam. Pop your ruler on again over the seam line. Can you see what I'm doing there? Or have I got it too close to me? I think you can see what I'm doing. So we've got a line that goes across from equidistant both sides. All right, now I'm going to sew along that line. Does that all make sense? Am I making sense tonight? I don't feel that I am really. Are you all following? Anne's having a lovely relaxing time, that's good Anne. Huh? I like it when I hear that you're relaxing. So I'm doing lock-in stitches or reverse stitches at the beginning and at the end. And that will hold that secure, okay? And then what I'm going to do with this is to just cut that off. There's our line there, a line of stitching, and I'm going to cut that off roughly a quarter of an inch outside that line. So we've got a nice seam allowance there, and the same with the other side. Okay. So I'm going to turn that through, and I would normally, at this point, give it another press, but I'm not going to because of time's sake. We're all right, we're quarter to eight. Has everybody else got quarter to eight? Yeah, 1945, says the computer. Now push your corners out. And then there you have it, okay? All right, somebody's just texted me to say, can I move my machine over a bit? But I think I did, didn't I? Can you still not see it? I'm sorry, too, too little space. Um, I've got a project going on, so I'm gonna be moving into the other room which is a bigger room but it's going to take the summer to get it sorted out okay now then i think what happened when i last saw i'm going under the table because my lining dropped off the end <laughs> oh, i'm doing really well tonight i'm doing really well the boss will say i don't want to do it anymore <laughs> What we're going to do now is lining. So we've got the lining here. So <clears throat> this is the top bit, the narrower bit. So across the bottom, we're going to sew down in two or three inches, or probably more than two inches because we want to box those bottoms. Um, so leave about four or five inches at, at, the, um, at the bottom for your turning gap. All right, can you see that there? I'm too far away. I can't see on my phone at all. There's a banner across the bottom I can't get rid of, and I can't see anything on my phone. I can only see in my MacBook, which is um, about 10 seconds delay. So what I'm going to do, our usual now, is to put a couple of pins there to remind me to stop and start. And tell me where I'm going, okay? It's not written in stone, but it will remind me to do my turning cap. Isn't it wonderful how you start stitching and then and then you forget to do your turning cap? How can you do that? How does your memory play you up that much in a short space of time? Okay, so I'm going down this seam, whizzing down here. Again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Come across the bottom to your pins. Do a back stitch. leave your gap, come along to your second set of pins, reverse stitch, and 
and then all the way up the second side. threads for a second and then I'm going to box the bottoms in exactly the same way so bring this center seam center bottom seam up to the side seam now with this because there's no bows or anything you can actually nestle that seam and you can feel that it's in the right place but if you want to do the same thing with a pin pop it through on the stitch line and make sure it comes out on the stitch line the other side then you will know that you're in the right place. Spread it properly. Make sure that comes to a point. And pop that on the stitch line. And pen. Goodness me. Doesn't matter doing this with a heat erasable pen or an ordinary pen. I've got a little fabric marker here. It's not erasable, but it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to sew along that line. Back stitch to start with. Put my put my needle in the middle again from my quarter of inch seam allowance. to cut the thread. There we go, that's better. Behave, miss. Okay, and then do the same on the other side. We're all shouting your pens under your machine tray. Is it? Oh. I can't see it. Never mind. I don't care. <laughs> Thank you for shouting. But I can't hear you. All right, so I've nestled that seam together. Make sure you pull those out the right side. And you see what I'm doing there. Pop on. So the line I've got here, can you see that? Let's bring it slightly more towards you. The line I've got here is on the stitch line. And the line here is on the point, so I know that's the correct measurement. Draw a line and stitch on the line. Then all I have to do is to trim this off like I did with the outer and then I'm going to try and see if I can find my handles. So we can put the handles on, pop one inside the other. See, I won't be able to find my handles. Great. There with my pen, underneath the machine. Okay, <clears throat> so to put the handles on, I'm going to show you, sorry, you just send a text in. This is the machine line, the seam down the side. And I've told you in the pattern to mark either side of that machine line because our strap is going either side. There again, the measurement is on the pattern. So I'm going to mark a little line either side. Do the same on the other seam line. So the straps are not going here to here. They're going either side of the seam line. 
Does that make sense? Is that okay? So either side of the seam line, make your mark and then your handles, these are not stabilised, they don't need to be, all right? But your handles are going to go centrally, so fold it and pop the, the fold just on the line. Can you see that? So there's your mark. I've folded that in half, just roughly, and I'm going to pop this, that on the centre of that line and pop a, a quilt, a quilter's um, clip in. Follow that around, make sure it's not... Um, twisted, fold that in half, there's my mark, pop that on the line. What we're going to need to do with these is just to make sure that they're at a 90 degree angle and I'm going to base these in place because it just makes it easier um, for us to see. So I can take this off. If you haven't got um, a free arm to your machine, do it from the inside because that's always easier. But I've got a free arm on this machine, so I can actually manage it. About an eighth of an inch in. Whoops, wrong foot. I'm just going to baste over there, and I'm going to go all the way across to the other handle. Make sure it's at a 90 degree angle. Can you see what I'm doing there? Okay, and so now you've got your handles basted in place. Can you see? There, on the other side, double check what I've done, I've done it correctly. Because I always like to put the fold, the, the single fold of the handle in the same place as I put the other handle. So there's my little line, folded my handle, pop it kind of centrally over that. Don't fret if it's a couple of millimetres out, it's not going to hurt. Follow it around, make sure it's not um, twisted and put it centrally over that one. And I'm going to base this in place as well. So all the way across, saves you cutting your thread. You can cut your thread if you want to. So there are our handles. We've got our handles on, can you see? We've got our handles in place. We've got a few threads that I just want to get rid of. Now we're going to pop this inside. You'll see that I haven't um, turned this through. So the inside of the lining is the right side and the outside of the, the main bag is uh, the right side. And I'm going to put these in so that the side seams will line up. So one inside the other. In the end, it doesn't matter which one you put inside which one. You can put the lining inside the outer bag if you want to, as long as you've got right sides here together. Okay, so that's the right side and that's the right side. It's not always easy to tell with this white on white fabric that I've got. But... Um, you can see what I'm saying. I'm going to put a clip on that side seam. Let's do the other side seam together. And nest those seams together. And put another clip on. And then you should find as you pull this that it's all the same. If you've got your seam alliances the same, then that will fit and all we're going to do now is sew all the way around all right so again if you haven't got a free arm put it on your machine and sew in there all right so put it like that on your machine if you've got a free arm you can do it from the outside it doesn't really matter where we start just make sure those raw edges are lined up use more pins use more clips whatever is the best for you and i'm going to Move across so it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you want to do a bit more because you feel safer doing a larger seam allowance, then feel free to do that. It's, it's all it's going to do is um, 
just make it a, a tiny little bit less tall and that doesn't matter it's a bag it doesn't have to fit anybody as you're coming up to the handles make sure there's no creases and make sure that your handle is still at a 90 degree angle okay line up as you go along or just check that you all lined up and coming up to the next handle so now make sure that that's a 90 degree angle as well a walking foot is great for this too i always keep my walking i've got a, a built-in dual feed foot and i always keep that on because if you come to any bulk um you know it's going to smooth smoothly run over it and you're not going to have any problems Coming up to the last handle now, so just make sure I've got that at a 90 degree angle. And we're nearly done. Push that out of the way, make sure the other one doesn't go on the floor. And then a top tip for this, for you to turn through. I am just going, uh, there's the bottom, all I'm going to do is to push that through and to tease that up. Push my, put my hand in, push that through and tease the lining out of the way. And then you can come back to it and it will all come the right way around without putting too much stress on your stitches. Turn the lining in the right way. And the next thing for us to do, which I'm not going to do now, I will do at a later time. There's one more thing after that. The next thing for us to do would be to stitch our turning gap. All right, so just stitch along there. You can do that by hand if you want to. The other thing is then I'm gonna push that lining inside the bag. I'm gonna push that, fold it over with your hands. I would be actually, um, if I were on my own, I would be pressing this at every point because this foam, it does want to fight back. But it's, it's almost like free motion quilting. The more you use it, the more it realises that you're the boss. So push the lining right down inside because you don't want to see the lining. Make sure it's nice and smooth down inside. And we're going to top stitch all the way around the top. Now I'm not going that close because um, the foam is there and it will help to keep its shape. Put some clips there. That's it. it will help to keep its shape if we do kind of between a quarter and an eighth of an inch all the way around the top. And I would normally do this in your metallic thread or whatever thread you did the quilting with, but for tonight, I'm not going to refret the machine for you. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make you sit through that a third time or a fourth time, whatever it is. I'm just going to go all the way around. Can you see where I'm at there? Okay. I'm going to start off at the side thing. And as you go around, sorry, I'm licking my fingers. As you go around, just literally push that lining underneath. Make sure it's nice and flat in the bottom. Make sure it's nice and flat inside so you get no creases. And then you have a beautiful a beautiful little sack if you like. To put the presents under the tree. If you made one for the whole of the family, they'd all have one each. No arguments. Father Christmas could sort them out into the bags and then everybody's happy. Okay, so you're 
you can see that that's all nicely top stitched around the top and that even doesn't even look bad does it I've got a very pale cream thread there and it doesn't look that bad with the um, still got a little bit of um, of the pen on those marks but on those lines but it's going to come off so now this needs a good steam press sew up your turning gap put your lining nicely inside give it a good going through and I'll bring it oh you can't see it you can't see all of it I'll bring I'll bring the phone up in a minute and you'll be able to see so is everybody happy is everybody happy with that all right I'm going to put the phone on the phone then I'm ready. I can put a bottle in there as well. Nice little gift bag as well if you wanted to put, you know, if you wanted to buy um, some things to give away. Nice little gift bag too. So, is everybody all right? There's lots of people saying they like it. It, it looks much bigger. Um, yes, it's, it's um, quite a good size. I think you've probably get three bottles in there because this comes out this way as well as this way. I think you'd get three bottles in there. So you'd certainly get a full pack of beer. If anybody's into their beer, that would be all right. Um, and some presents on the top of it. This is only, these are only some little small boxes that I've, that I've packed up, but um, you know, it's good. And then of course, it'll go down flat so that you can just put it away it's easy to put it away for, getting for next year so there we go so that's me done just enough time to say just to reiterate again I'll be back with you tomorrow night um, because we had technical issues last Thursday if you're not a member of the gold club you won't be able to watch tomorrow but you do have 23 hours to join good value six pounds 95 you get a mid-month madness pattern you get two from me you get two patterns from Lizzie you get all the MIM patterns for free you get extra bits and pieces competitions all sorts of things and there's a special special um, surprise tomorrow night as well so um, if you want to join lizzycurtis.com and join in with that Lizzie will be with you next Monday for the first um, Making It Monday in August, so that'll be lovely. And uh, so everybody's saying, how is Frank? He's doing really well, except that he's discovered he can chew. I've got to tell you this before we go. I was using some Angelica on Friday. For those who don't know what it is, Angelica is just fibres, glitter fibres. They're tiny, and then you spread them onto something, put um, uh, some baking parchment on the top, and... and press it lightly and then it all goes into like glitter to cover your fabric. I didn't close my bag properly when I came back from my workshop that I was doing and uh, Frank managed to get his muzzle in there and I had Angelica all over the bedroom floor. Everywhere. And he knew I was cross, he knew that he shouldn't have done it and he was running around with Angelica dripping out of his mouth looking like Father Christmas. So how could I be cross? <laughs> how could I be cross? Um, but he's doing fine. He's great. He's downstairs with his daddy at the moment. So it's been lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me and um, see you all. Um, well, see all of those of you that are gold members tomorrow night and otherwise next Monday. Take care. Night night. Thanks for watching. Bye.